Hello all, welcome to SourceCAD. In this tutorial, I will tell you how you can use blocks and modify your drawings using blocks and all the functionalities that are included in a block. So basically, a block is a drawing component that you can use repetitively. That means whenever required, you can call a block and use it. As uh, you can see on the screen right now that I have many instances of this object. You can call it a window. All these windows are made with blocks. So the biggest advantage a block gives over a normal object or a normal copy paste is if you'll edit any one of the instances of this block in block editor, then all the windows will update simultaneously. So you don't need to manually update all the blocks, all the windows. Just you need to update a single one and all of them will be updated. So that's one of the biggest advantage a block gives over a normal object. So we're going to look into that and how you can use a block to modify your drawing or how you can include and make a block in your drawing. So let's get started. Uh, I'll start from a new drawing. So I'll go to new and start your drawing. Now on this new drawing, let's select uh, a rectangle and a circle so I've made this drawing a simple drawing and I'll try to convert these two objects into a block right now you can see that this is a uh, circle and this one is a rectangle both are separate for making block you can go to this block panel on home ribbon or you can go to insert ribbon and block definition panel here also you'll find create block icon and here we have this create block icon you can also write B for block on command line and press enter and your create block definition dialog box will appear. Now on this dialog box, you can see that the first uh, section is for name. So I'll specify a name and I'll enter A as its name. Now the second panel asks for point. So now you need to specify the base point for this block. So click on this pick point this window disappears for a moment and specify a base point right now I am specifying this lower left corner so this point becomes the base point and all the coordinates of this point X Y and Z coordinates will be mentioned here you can also manually type the coordinates in these uh, boxes but that would be a little troublesome for you so that's why I selected pick point now let's go to select objects so now we'll select all the objects from which we want to make blocks right now we only have two objects so select both the objects and press enter now you can see that two objects selected so we have select these two objects so here we have now three radio buttons retain convert to block and delete and obviously we want this object to convert into a block so right now I'll keep this checked convert to block and uh, I'll show you what retain and delete is for in a moment so now let's move on to this here you'll find annotative scale uniformly allow exploding keep all of them unchecked as of now and I'll also explain these things in a moment now here on the settings panel you'll see block units right now the unit of this block is inches which is same as the template unit so you can set any unit as per your requirement or you can to select unitless if you want you can assign a hyperlink to this block as well so click on hyperlink and uh, here on this uh, hyperlink insert hyperlink panel you can write a web page address of a web page or any other location on your system or on your PC and once you click on that block that uh, web page or the um, file which is stored on your PC will open up so I'm going to avoid this thing right now but you can always select this and I'll cancel it now let's go and hit OK button so now we have created this block and now hover your cursor over this object and you'll see it's indicating block reference so this object is now a block and now let's go to our block table so here click on this insert and you'll see that here we have our block table and the block A is inserted on this block table so if you'll copy paste this object click on the circle you'll see that complete object is selected and here is the base point so you'll find that the grip is now present only on the base point which we have selected and if you'll copy this object then you can paste it and all the instances they are also blocks this one is also a block and this one is also a block okay now let's go and erase this and let's make few more blocks and this time I'll select this object 
for a block. Now let's go and convert this one into a block. So I'll go to create block, write its name. So I'm selecting B, click on pick point, and here's my pick point. Now select objects, select both these objects, press enter. And now in the previous case, we have selected convert to block. This time I'll select retain and click OK. Here also I'm making no change at all. And here also it's as it is, no changes. Click on OK. Now let's see what happened. Now let's hover our cursor on this and you'll see that it's still a polyline. This object is not converted to a block and in the previous case it was converted to a block. That's because here I've selected retain radio button. A image of this object will be inserted in our block table. So here we have this object, this block. You can insert this and you'll see that it's same, it's identical element and this one is a block but the object on screen is not a block. Now let's go and explore the third option. So I'll make another object and I'll convert this one into a block as well. So go to create block and name it C, pick point, select any pick point. Now select objects, I'll select both these objects and in this case I'll select delete. Now once you select delete and hit OK button, the block on the screen vanishes, it deletes. But this block is again inserted in our block table. So here we have this block in uh, our block table. You can insert it anytime you want from this block table. But the block on screen, the object on screen gets deleted when you select delete radio button. So these were the three radio buttons. Now let's go and move ahead to other options. So I'll go on and delete all of these blocks. If you have deleted this block, don't worry, the block is still in the block table and you can recall them whenever you want. So you don't need to worry and this block is stored in your current drawing. So now let's go move ahead and I'll create one more block. And Now here I have this object and I'll convert this object into a block. So go to create block and write its name 1, 2, 3. Select a pick point. This time, this lower right corner will be my pick point. And select objects. I've selected all the objects. And I'm selecting convert to block so that the object on screen also gets converted to a block. And in the previous cases, in the previous three blocks, I have kept these radio buttons unchecked. But in this case, I'll check scale uniformly and allow exploding. Rest all remains as it is. And I'm not changing annotative. So I've checked scale uniformly and allow exploding and let's see what these options are for and click OK. So here we have this object 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 added to our block table. It's converted to a block with no visible changes, but stop. Let's see what the change it made. So I'll go and delete this. And now I'll try to insert our blocks. So I'll go to insert block and insert our previously made block which was A. Let's insert A. But instead of inserting it from here, from this block table, I'll go to more options. Now click on more options and there you'll find that we have much more options of inserting this block. So now the first option is for insertion point. You can see here that the name of block is 123. You can change the name. So let's go and change it to A because we want to insert A. And here you can see the preview. Now the first panel shows insertion point and is specify on screen is checked. That means you need to specify a point on screen where you want to include that block. If you uncheck it, you can specify the coordinates of that insertion point, but I'll keep it checked. Now the next option is the scale. So here right now you can see that the scale for X axis is one units. That means the original block, the original dimension of blocks will be retained. Now let's go and insert it and click OK. And here is our original block. OK, so let's go again, insert and select more options. Now here, I'll change this scale to two. And you'll see that these options change when I change X scale along x-axis but if you want you can click on this uniform scale radio button and now you can scale them non-uniformly so now here I have changed this scale to two units let's keep it at one unit 
and uh, we don't have any z-axis so changing z-scale will make no difference to our drawing so I've changed the axis scale axis scale factor to 2 y I've retained it now click on OK oops what happened to our drawing this was the original block and here's the distorted block actually the length across along x gets doubled because we have increased the scale along x-axis and that was 2 but in case of y it retained and it was 1 and it is 1 here in this case so you can actually deform our original block you can deform it if you have allowed it initially now let's go and repeat this process with the block which we have created in the end that was 1 2 3 block so you can uh, so obviously insert this block from that block, block table but now if you want to insert it from more options and there you will find that uniform scale option is not activated and you cannot change this so if you will change the scale of this object to 2 then y and z scale factor will change automatically and you cannot control them individually now let's go and add it and you'll see that the whole block gets bigger it gets twice when compared with original block and you cannot scale them along x and y axis separately so that's the difference which it makes if you'll scale if you'll keep scale uniformly checkbox selected you can scale it uniformly only along x y and z and if you'll uncheck it you can scale it along different axis as well now there was one more checkbox that was for allow exploding so as you have noticed that in the previous cases in the previous blocks now let's go and delete this one also this distracts us okay and now let's drag it here so now here we have these two blocks this was the previous block in which allow exploding was unchecked that means this block cannot be exploded and what explode does if you'll explode this block it will it will convert this block to its original components so now let's go and try to explode it for exploding I'll select this block press X in my command line and now press enter and there you'll see that command line uh, says one could not be exploded and uh, how are your cursor and you'll see it's still a block you cannot convert it into a normal object now let's go and try to explode this block click on this right X and press enter and now let's hover your cursor and here it is the block is converted into its individual components all the three rectangles are now separate and this object is no longer a block but don't worry the block is still in the block table so since we have allowed exploding in the second case in this case in the case of this one to three block the block is exploded and we can explode it convert it into a simple object but in this case it cannot be exploded that was the difference so I hope you understood all the points and if you have any doubt please let me know in the comment box and in our next tutorial uh, we'll look at editing blocks and redefining blocks and writing blocks so all those settings we'll look into next tutorial thanks again for watching